Today in Battleground, Pennsylvania, Riley Gaines and Tulsi Gabbard teaming up to headline a Stand With Women event looking at the future of women's sports. As they both say, a vote for Donald Trump is a vote for women's rights and fairness in sports. Hosts of the Gaines for Girls podcast on Outkick.com and Independent Women's Voice Ambassador Riley Gaines is here to react. Riley, it's so great to have you on. So just tell us about this event. Yeah, so we're super excited to be, of course, in the state of Pennsylvania. Uh, key Senate race, of course, we are hoping this is a state that will turn out in, in masses for Donald Trump. Uh, people will be there, people like Tulsi Gabbard, of course, myself, uh, some of the, the nation's best thought leaders, women like Sage Steele, who has really been pivotal, pivotal mm -hmm. for me, um, has been a, a role model for me. Uh, but really what we're here to do is remind voters that we need leaders who stand with women and to stop believing the gaslighting. I mean, like we saw last night uh, from Michelle Obama and Kamala Harris. Uh, it seems very obvious to me that they have almost given up entirely on the mail vote, uh, which, uh, I mean, understandably so, given the, the white dudes for Harris ad that we saw, uh, given Tim Walz's impromptu uh, shooting uh, incident where he, he seemingly couldn't even load a shotgun, uh, it seems as if they are going all in now on the angry, abortion-obsessed right. female contingent. Yeah. But I can tell you, as a woman, we care about more than, than just the right to dismember and abort a developing fetus in the womb. Uh, we, we want safe, safe streets. We want low crime. We want low taxes. We want world peace. We want school choice. We want free speech. We want to protect women and women's sports. Yeah, it's such a great point. You know, when you look at rallies and events for Donald Trump, look at the range of issues that they're, that they're covering. Everything from the economy to crime to education um, and, and women's sports. And their rallies are just abortion rallies. And they're full of really just lies, like calling it abortion care. What the heck is that? Um, that, is the, the, that is the most uh, disturbing euphemism I've ever heard. Um, let's talk about this, Riley. Volley a volleyball player was nearly forced to face, uh, forced to face trans a transgender opponent cries and alleges that the school pressured the team to compete. Talk to us about what happened there. Yes, so yesterday I was actually in Reno with the University of Nevada women's volleyball team who stood up against their administration, their institution, their coaches, their university uh, during their scheduled game time against San Jose State University, of course, a team that has allowed a male to take a scholarship, a roster spot, a travel spot uh, from a deserving female athlete. Yeah. Uh, during their game time, they held a press conference and explained to the community why they weren't going to be participating. Of course, they cited reasons of of safety concerns. Uh, of course, they mentioned maintaining the integrity of women's sports. They talked about the emotional toll, uh, the emotional blackmail, really, that their university has used on them to stifle their voices, to muzzle them, uh, to get them to comply. But they said, look, uh, we know we forfeited. We know we accepted a loss, but it's a loss we are willing to accept because some things matter more than victory. Uh, and is those this the, things, is of this course, the Is this the only strategy that will work? It, it feels like it is. It feels like until women en masse just say, we're not going to do this against men anymore. We're not going to compete against them. Well, again, this goes back to having cowards, uh, weak need, mm -hmm. spineless, morally bankrupt cowards for leaders, whether that's the federal government, whether that's the NCAA, whether that's in corporate America, even seemingly our spiritual leaders have become weak. Yeah. And when that's the case, I mean, we have to stand up for ourselves. I, I hate it. I hate that these girls are, are ultimately having to bear that burden. But again, it's a burden that, that's necessary, number one. It's, it's worthwhile. Uh, and I would argue that it's urgent that we do so. So I could not be more proud uh, of these girls and their bravery and their leadership. Yeah. The other one that's weak are, are the feminists. And you know what? They're just not useful anymore. Um, I've always said, and Riley, I've told this to you to your face, um, you are the face of the new feminist movement. And those young women that were standing up there for themselves and their rights and their safety and the right to just be who they are, at the, to, to own their own gender um, and, and, and claim it for themselves because they are bi biologically born that way, that's, that's heroism to me. Um, Riley, thanks for joining us, and good luck with this event, and say hi to Tulsi from us. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmey. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.